Hi, this is Herb Spiro with the Dr. Bax channel, and I'm delighted today to be sharing this video with two of my granddaughters, Molly and Mayan. We're here visiting um, from home, and they're going to do a video with me on assembling 3D printed earrings. And then later in the video, I'm going to show you how to find models for 3D printed earrings on Thingiverse and how to design your own on Tinkercad. Okay, let's get started and let's learn something together. Okay, let's begin by going through all of the supplies you're going to need to do this project and also looking at a couple finished samples. First, the samples. These earrings were printed on a Prusa i3 MK3. That's an expensive printer. It's about a $750 printer as a kid, $1,000 fully assembled. But you could print the exact same earrings in the same quality on a $180 monoprice mini select printer, on a printer the size of a Mixmaster. That's one of the things that's wonderful about 3D printed earrings. They're very inexpensive. They print very quickly in about 20 minutes, and you don't need a lot of complex materials or specialized skills. In addition to the earrings, you need a set of posts and backs and hoops. Um, I purchased these for about $12 off of Amazon. You need a set of rings for attaching the earrings to the various mechanisms used for hooking an earring into an ear. Um, these were also just a couple bucks on Amazon. And make sure that it comes with one of these fancy rings that have slots in it. I'll show you how to use this in just a moment. In addition, you'll need a needle nose pliers and maybe a side cutter. I use a needle. Uh, this is specifically a needle designed for cleaning the nozzles of a 3D printer, but you could use any needle to open up the holes if they didn't open up properly when you 3D printed these earrings. And that's about it. Now, optionally, if you want to enhance your earrings, you can use some of this wonderful uh, Deco Art metallic paint. It's an acrylic paint, but it dries metallic, very, very shiny. And then I went to the local mall and at a kiosk for a couple bucks a piece, I bought some of these fake gems and you can take these off and you can take and add them to your 3D printed earrings to spiff them up a bit. So that's all it takes to 3D print earrings. Now let me invite Mayan and Molly back in and we'll assemble some earrings together. Then I'm going to show you how to find designs on Thingiverse and I'm going to show you how to create your own designs in Tinkercad. So girls, which earrings do you like here? Why don't you pick one that you like? Okay, now, then you're not going to need to select a back and a hoop. So Mayan, we'll start with you. What style back do you usually use for your earrings? Um, well, usually when I have uh -huh. I use... Do you use like hooks or do you use posts? Okay. So we actually, so when you're using a post, all you have to do is buy the parts and um, the post goes right through the earring. So let's clean off this earring and we'll see how this looks on my eye. So my aunt, take off that earring that you're already wearing. Now these posts are rather long. So you will want to trim them to length, so you'll need your diagonal cutter that you're already using for your 3D printer. We'll just take a little bit of alcohol here, and we'll clean off our posts really well. And here's the back. Why don't you see if this fits through, how it looks. And we're, oh wow, that actually looks quite beautiful. And we're going to take a picture of that and blow that up. So why don't you model that earring? And now I'm going to do a little project with Molly. We're going to take this earring, and just to show you how you would do it, we're going to attach it 
to one of these hooks, okay? And to attach it to one of these hooks, we're going to have to use a little hoop, and Molly's going to help me with that. So let's get a... Take a gold one. We'll take a gold one, and maybe like this size. Yeah. Now, these hoops come with a very interesting thing. There's a ring, and the reason it has a ring is you take the hoop, and you hold it in a plot in a pliers, and then you just put one end in, and you can use that to open up the ring. Okay, so Molly, would you put the earring over the ring for me? No, this part, the, this part of the earring first. Oh, excellent. Now, let's take, and Molly, will you put the other part of the earring over the hoop? And let's see how that would look. I'm, and Oh, wow, that actually looks quite beautiful. So with a 3D printer, some materials from Amazon, and then once again, we could take these and we could spiff these up a bit. So if we take this clear earring, this is the one that Mayan already has, and what color stone would you put in the middle to make it pretty? In the middle? I might I put the green one. The, okay. um, let's try it. So now these are self-stick, but I would probably put a drop of super glue on there to make it even better. Well, that's sort of cool. Yeah. Doesn't it look cool? Okay, let's continue with the video and learn how to find earrings and design earrings. Okay, now that Mayan, Molly, and I have enjoyed putting some earrings together and really made some beautiful things, they're very excited about the possibility of doing more and more of these. I'm going to teach you a bit about where to find designs and how to design your own earrings. The programs we're going to use are accessible and safe for elementary school children. Obviously, you need to supervise your children anytime they're on the internet, uh, but these programs are both used in elementary schools. So once you master these skills, you can teach them to your children or grandchildren. We're going to start with Thingiverse. Let's look at the screen together. If you go to the Thingiverse website, the, you have the option to join and sign in. The advantage of that is you can create a collection of things, of objects, that you want to use over and over again. But it's not absolutely required. So we're going to go over here to search. And uh, I always, for some reason or another, have had trouble with spelling earrings until I realized it's ear rings. Two words. So let's look for ear ring. And I will tell you from experience that ear ring finds literally hundreds, in this case over a thousand matches. Earrings with an S on the end finds very few. So enter it without an S. And you can see here lots and lots of designs. But I need to show you something very important. So let's say we go to this design here which is quite beautiful, made by Smart Design. The first thing you'll notice is there's this little square on the corner. That's a tag that has their copyright. You'll also notice if you go down here, it will see it's a Creative Commons attribution copyright, non-commercial, no derivatives. That means you can download and print this for your own use, for your grandchildren, you can't sell the things you print, and you can't modify the design. So if you want to actually modify the design, you have to find an earring where the license is different. In this case, the license is Creative Commons Attribution. That means you can modify it, you can even use it commercially, but you have to tell everyone where you got the design. Um, so you have to give credit to the author. In this case, the author is TZT. Now, there's an alternative way to do this. This is really easy to do. You download these designs, you print them, you're all set. What if you really want to do your own? So you own them, perhaps you want to sell them, 
perhaps for an upcoming school PTA fair with your kids, you're going to make a bunch of earrings and sell them as a fundraiser. Perhaps for your synagogue, your mosque, your church, you're going to sell these as a fundraiser. Wonderful thing to do. So let me show you now how to design your own earrings. We're going to go to a different program called Tinkercad. Now, when you first go to Tinkercad, you'll have to sign up. It's completely free. Tinkercad does have a username and password. And then periodically, I don't know what the frequency is, they will send you a special number via text message to your phone. So that's a bit of security around Tinkercad. Tinkercad, at least here in the United States, I assume worldwide, is used by lots and lots of schools starting at the third and fourth grade because just a wonderful program made by the folks at Autodesk who also produce high-end commercial programs like Fusion 360 or others. So we're going to click on Create a New Design. And you might think to make a set of round earrings, we would start with a cylinder. Or if you go all the way down here, there's something called a ring. Well, I don't really like the ring model. I find it hard to manipulate. So I'm going to recommend you start with a tube. And I'll show you why. It's really very easy to do. So we're going to take and drag a tube onto our screen. We're going to set the radius to 20. And we can click there and type 20 in. We're going to leave the wall thickness at 2.5. And this is all in millimeters. Now you have the option in Tinkercad of using millimeters or imperial measurements. Why would you use imperial? Yeah, I get it. You're from the United States and you're used to feet and inches. Well, for things that are small like earrings, you're gonna need to be measuring in 16th and 30 seconds and 64th and adding those things together and doing fractional arithmetic. I don't know, I'll tell you, it's just a lot easier to go off and buy a metric ruler and do things in millimeters. A millimeter is about a 16th of an inch Maybe you have to go smaller, so you have to go in fractions of millimeters. In fact, the imperial system of inches, feet, and fractions is so complex that advanced manufacturers don't actually use those measurements. They use inches and thousandths because thousandths is a decimal-based system. So we're going to do this all in millimeters. So we're going to make this radius 20 millimeters, the wall thickness 2.5 millimeters. Then I'm going to click on this little red dot here, and I'm make, going to make the height one millimeter. So I have my first ring designed here. Now I'm going to take and go over here to the ruler and drag a ruler over this model. But first I'm going to select it, and then drag the circle so it's right over the square. That will align the ruler to our model. Then I'm going to click on top view to make it really just easier to see everything. Now, if I take and do a command V that will duplicate this ring, and now let's just scroll it up till it's halfway up, 20 millimeters up. See the 20 millimeters over here? So now we have two rings that are centered. That looks like a pretty nice design for an earring but we need a place for the post. So let's take another one here. Let's duplicate it again. Let's scroll it all the way up here so it's sort of out of the way. And now let's set the radius to two and the wall thickness to one. And then we're gonna scroll this back down. Now let's click off the object so we can actually see it. And we can see it's a little bit too high. So I'm going to zoom in here, go back to that object, and I'm going to have it so it just overlaps so that the hole is at the top of the other ring. Okay, now that I've positioned the top ring so it just overlaps and the hole is still visible, means I have a one millimeter hole at the top. Let's select this whole set of rings. Let's make sure we aligned it properly by clicking on Align and clicking on the center here. And yes, they're aligned properly. Let's select the whole thing and group it. 
That way when we export it by clicking on export as an STL file, Tinkercad will export this as an XDL file to our download folder, and we've just produced our first earring. You can do the exact same things with squares, with stars, with diamonds, uh, with any shape you want. You can offset the shapes. It is trivial to use Tinkercad to create beautiful, beautiful jewelry. Let me show you one other example. I'm going to select this again, and now I'm going to ungroup it. I'm going to select the ring on the bottom, and I'm going to delete it. Now, what if Molly wanted a monogrammed earring? Well, I could use the text option here in Tinkercad, but that's only a single font. So I'm going to go all the way down here to All Shape Generators, click on it, and scroll down until I find the option for Script. I'm going to drag that onto my work plane, and under text, I'm going to put a capital M. Now I'm going to make sure I'm on the top plane, and I'm going to go over here and make sure I'm in flat view. So I'm going to switch to flat view because it'll make it a little easier. I'm going to drag this into the center of my ring. Now that won't work. Why? Because the M is going to fall out when I print it. So what I need to do is I need to make it just enough bigger and maybe I change the dimensions a little bit so that it touches on a couple points. And we'll just do it by eye until it looks good. Now I can go back to the standard view. Let me zoom in again, click on my letters, and I have to change the height of the letter also to be a 1. Now, I've produced another beautiful earring. Let's group this all together. And when I take and print this, the three points where it's touching will keep the M in place. So another example of an easy way to produce an earring, in this case, a monogrammed earring in Tinkercad. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a blast making it. Uh, I'm pretty sure Molly and Mayan had a blast making it, uh, even though at times they had a frozen smile because of my uh, incorrect directions to them to smile all the time. I probably should have just said, be yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Stop! <laughs> okay. If you did enjoy this, please give me a thumbs up. Share this with other people so other people can learn how to do these wonderful things. Earrings are perfect because you can print them on the least expensive 3D printer you can buy. So buy that $180, $190 Monoprice Mini Select or buy a $230 Creality Ender 3 Pro. Buy any 3D printer and you can print these in minutes. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and let's continue to learn things together.